Hi everyone, this video is about the Sharp EL9000, Sharp's first graphing calculator from 1986. And this was the most advanced of the AR series of programmable calculators that supported the arithmetic expression reserve programming language. And the series began with the stunning EL5100 from 1979, the first calculator to support a dot matrix LCD display capable of uh, displaying alphanumeric characters. And it was also the first to support evaluation of full arithmetic expressions. And I've made uh, separate videos on the 5150 uh, on the top right and uh, the 512S in the middle on the bottom row, both of which also supported uh, the first version of AER. And the EL9000 was a really impressive calculator for 1986, as well as being, in my opinion, one of the coolest looking calculators ever made, with its large screen, black, uh, its black colour scheme and dual keyboard. Uh, it came on the market only a year later than Casio's FX7000G, the world's first uh, graphing calculator. And as well as having a new version of AER, it supported graphing matrices and I.O. via a cassette and printer interface. And also had a generous uh, 5,120 bytes for programs, variables, arrays and statistical data. <clears throat> and Sharp weren't the only manufacturer in the mid-80s experimenting with this folding keyboard form factor. Uh, Casio already had models like the FX5200P that used the cover in a similar way to house an Alpha keyboard. And a year later in 1987, HP brought out their first graphing calculator, the 28C, with a similar but less pocketable case. But I think the EL9000's physical design works really well, and it's curious this form factor died out relatively quickly, because to me, the separate Alpha keyboard has a lot of advantages. Physically, the EL9000 is very compact and light at only 140 grams. It has a segmented display with a 96 by 32 dot matrix component that can display 16 columns by 4 rows of text. And there's a section uh, below for indicators for the many modes the calculator supports. Uh, on the left of the calculator is a physical switch uh, for modes. So there is uh, two programming modes, one for AER1, uh, one for AER2, uh, comp mode for regular calculations and a stat mode uh, for entering data and calculating statistics. And the main uh, keyboard has a fairly standard chiclet style keyboard. Uh, it has all the keys you need to do regular scientific calculations. But on the right is a thin membrane keyboard that's part of the calculator's cover. Uh, so there's no tactile feedback uh, when you hit the keys. Uh, but it does seem to work fine, although you wouldn't want to do a lot of typing on it. Uh, the membrane keyboard has alpha keys and keys for uh, memory operations and plotting. Uh, so it's for less frequent operations. Some keys have a second function that's written above them, and there are second function shift keys on both keyboards. Uh, and there's also a shift key on the membrane keyboard that switches between upper and lower case characters in programming modes. Above the membrane keyboard is this reference chart for the statistical graph supported in stats mode. So this one's in Japanese, but they correspond to a histogram, broken line graph, cumulative frequency graph, a normal distribution graph, scatter diagram, and linear regression. And on the bottom edge is a very small I.O. port uh, for the CE50P cassette and printer interface. And the 9000 supports printing of a screen image, a program listing, or data in a matrix. And via its cassette interface, the calculator can save and load data and programs to cassette. So on the back, we can see an explanation of error codes in Japanese. Uh, there's a model number and uh, manufacture date in a reset button. 
Uh, and so to access the batteries, you need to take out these two screws. So I'll do that now. So here we can see the two CR2032s uh, uh, for uh, its main operations. And there's a third battery, which I believe is for maintaining the static RAM while the calculator is off. Here's an image of the internals from my calculator DB uh, website. So there's two sharp chips. One is a version of the SC61860 processor, which was used in many of Sharp's pocket computers. And there's also a Toshiba TC5565 static RAM chip. Uh, you can also see the speaker on the top right panel, uh, which is used for a key click mode, which I'll demo in a minute. So to do regular calculations on 9000, we use comp mode and I'll turn on that key click uh, using this musical note key. Of course, it's fully arithmetic and supports operator precedence. So uh, we can enter an expression and actually I'll turn that click off. Uh, functions are entered prefix style. So for example, sign. Uh, we can also chain operations together. And uh, we can use this playback function and the cursor keys uh, to edit expressions. Uh, values can be stored into 28 or 26 alpha variables using uh, the store key. And uh, the calculator supports binary, octal, and hex bases. So Let's enter, say, an integer, and we can convert that to hex. Um, and now in hex mode, all answers will be displayed in hex. I'll switch back to decimal. And so let's also, uh, in comp mode, you can also create a, an array or matrix using the dim instruction. Uh, so let's create a matrix A uh, that is 2 by 2. And we're prompted to populate its elements, so I'll enter 10, uh, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, we can hit second function and down to exit that mode. Uh, but to actually do matrix operations, we need to switch to um, matrix uh, mode, which is a special sub-mode of comp mode. Uh, so we go second function matrix, and here we can say find the determined determinant of the matrix we just entered. Uh, so that's second function determinant, uh, and then uh, matrix A. So graphing is also a function within comp mode. So say we wanted to graph a quadratic equation, we'd hit the graph key and let's enter, say, x squared uh, plus 5x minus 10. And uh, we can use the auto command to set automatic bounds uh, and then hit the draw key. Yeah, and so it takes a little bit while to draw the function. Uh, in, in comp mode, we can hit this uh, TG uh, D key to switch between text, uh, graph, and data modes. And we can also use the solve key. Now we have to select graph first. Uh, to find the uh, roots of the equation that are on screen. Uh, so here there's a root that's just a little bit over 1.5. And so it's not the biggest uh, screen that I've seen on a graphing calculator, uh, but it's definitely very functional. So AER is a formula-based programming language that I've talked about quite a bit in other videos. And it started out as a way to calculate simple formulae, but Sharp added conditions, loops, and subroutines, and the 9000 supports both AER version 1 and 2. Uh, and the versions are not dramatically different. AER2 supports a new way to prompt for values and local variable names, but otherwise it looks a lot like the previous version. So let's switch to AER2 mode. And 
uh, we'll take a look at uh, my favorite simple example. So we can hit the uh, program key uh, to select the program we want to look at. And this is the going to be the full distance equation. Uh, my favorite simple example of the distance an object falls under gravity in time t. So we can hit the down key to see the um, main routine. And so the 9000 will prompt for any variables in the formula that are lowercase. So in this case, uh, t. So to run it, we can switch back to comp mode. Uh, we can select our program using the program key and then just hit comp. Uh, so let's enter 10 seconds uh, and uh, the object falls 590 meters. Uh, so let's look at a more complex example now. Um, it's going to be the a program to calculate the roots of a quadratic equation. Uh, so this one uses three subroutines indicated by uh, these numbers in blocks. So there's one, two, and three. Uh, and if we hit the second function down key, we can see the first subroutine, uh, which prompts for the three quadratic coefficients, uh, a, b, and c, uh, and calculates uh, var variable d, which will indicate whether the roots of the quadratic equation are real or uh, complex. So if we return back to our main routine, uh, we can see the use of this conditional test. So d is greater or equal to zero. And then there's a uh, yes and a no clause uh, that call subroutines two and three respectively. Uh, so for example, subroutine two, uh, for example, calculates the case where there are two real roots, x1 and x2. Uh, so let's go back to comp mode again and we'll select that one and hit comp to run it. And uh, we'll use the same equation that I graphed. Uh, so b was five, uh, a was one, and c was negative ten. Yeah, so we can see that same root at, uh, at one point five three. Uh, and then there's actually a second one at negative 6.531. Uh, and so AER can be quite intuitive if the problem you're solving can be easily expressed as formula. Uh, and although AER2 does support loops, as I demoed in a previous version, uh, it's not as intuitive for uh, creating iterative programs. And so in summary, the EL9000 was a fantastic first graphing calculator for Sharp. Uh, it had really powerful functionality in a compact and beautiful package. And again, it's interesting that Sharp and other manufacturers moved away from this folding form factor. On so many advanced calculators, you need to press uh, an alpha shift key to type letters. And so it's so nice to have uh, that available on this uh, simple second keyboard, which again, you're not accessing all of the time. And so in 1992, Sharp introduced the EL 9200 and 9300 series, which looked a lot more like we, uh, what we now consider a traditional graphing calculator. And with these devices, they also moved to a basic like programming language. Uh, later, they extended the series with the innovative 9600, which was the first touchscreen graphing calculator uh, that used a stylus. Uh, but that probably is one for a future video. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.